Today, we're going to learn how to use the stack data structure to evaluate a postfix expression. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. The stack data structure can be used to solve a surprising number of problems, one of which is how to evaluate is an infix notation and a postfix notation. Today's video will show how to do that. To begin, let's talk about what infix notation is. Infix notation occurs when the operator is between the operands. For an example, if I say one plus two, the plus is the operator, and it happens between the two operands, one and two. I can either I can also express this with one plus two, or one plus two to the third power times four. Or I can use parentheses, one times two plus three. Prefix notation is the operator happens before the operands. For an example, add one and two, where adds the operator plus one, two, or plus two times to the power of two to the three to the four, or times one plus two, three. Doesn't seem very intuitive, does it? Postfix notation occurs when the operator is after the operands. For an example, take one and two and add them. Notice how add is after the operands, or one, two plus, or one, two, three to the exponent four times plus. And one, two, three plus times. Now, each of these three sets of, of equations actually evaluate to the same, even though they use different notations. <clears throat> so how are we going to evaluate a postfix expression? And this, the pseudocode is provided below. Basically, if we encounter a number or a variable, we push it onto the stack. And then if we encounter an operator, then we pop the last two items off the stack evaluate them according to that operator, and then push the answer back onto the stack. When I'm done, the stack will have only one element on it, and that'll be the solution. To demonstrate how this works, take a look at the infix three times parentheses four plus five and parentheses time minus six. The postfix notation is three, four, five plus times six minus. Okay, so how are we going to evaluate this? Well, we're going to start with an empty stack, and I'm going to point to three. Now, since three is an operand, I push it directly on the stack. Then I move to four. Since four is an operand, I push it onto the stack. And since five is an operand, I push it onto the stack. Now I have three elements on the stack in opposite order in which they came. When I say plus, I'm going to pop the last two elements, four and five. And notice how in the infix, the four plus five is the first to be evaluated. I'm going to evaluate them and push the result on the stack, which will be 9. All right, now notice how my infix is the same as 3 times 9 minus 6. So I went from the 4 plus 5 in parentheses to the 9. Now I'm going to do the multiply. So once again, the multiply is an operator. So I take the last two items off the stack, which will correspond to the 3 and the 9. Notice how the 3 and 9 are red on my infix notation. I'm going to evaluate them and put the results on the stack. And that's going to be the same as 3 times 9, which becomes 27 minus 6. Then I push 6 on the stack, because it's not brand. And then I do subtraction. 26, uh, 27 minus 6 is 21. And that's my answer. OK, let's do it again with something a little more complicated. OK, so once again, my infix is 5 plus 4 times 3 to the 2 power minus 1. So when I have an operand, I'm going to push it onto the stack. When I have an operand, push it on the stack, push it, push it. It's like a salt and pepper song, isn't it? All right. Now I have the exponent, and the exponent is going to correspond to 2 to the third power. And I obviously want to do that first. And notice how that the order of operations is implied by the way things are, are evaluated in the postfix expression. We can learn how to turn an infix notation into a postfix notation in a later video. OK, so 2 to the third, uh, uh, 3 to the second power will get evaluated, and that turns into 9. And then I'm going to pop those off the stack and put 9 on. Now we have multiply. So that corresponds to 4 times 9. And 4 times 9 will become 36. So I'll take those off the stack. And then we have plus, and that's the 5 plus 36. And I'm going to evaluate that and turn it to 41 and push it on the stack. Then I'll have the 1, push it on the stack. And then we have the minus, and that corresponds to 41 minus 1, which is 40. And that's my answer. All right, let's do a couple more problems here. Let's take a look at this. 4, 5 times 44, 2 divided by plus. OK, so we'll start with a 4, push it on the stack, 
the five, push it on a stack, multiply, evaluate them and put the results on the stack, which will be 20. 44, push it on a stack. Two, push it on a stack. Divided by, 44 divided by two becomes 22. Plus 20 plus 22 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Okay, we have another big problem here. 32, push it on a stack. 16, push it on a stack. Eight, push it on a stack. Push it, push it, and push it. Exponent, two to the one is two. Multiply, four times two is eight. Divided by, eight divided by eight is one. Plus 16 plus one is 17. Minus 32 minus 17 is, is 15. And that's the answer. These are in the application part and exercise 11.8 of the C++ Data Structures textbook.